Okay, so my special guest today is G Flip, who is a very talented Melbourne musician, singer, songwriter, producer, and drummer. I'll be now speaking with G Flip about her career and her new album, plus her upcoming tour. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Hey, good, thanks. Like so many, I'm a huge fan of your music. However, for the small number of listeners who haven't heard m- your music and besides do yourself a favour and do, <laughs> please explain to them your sound. Uh, my sound of music. Uh, I feel like it's kind of rough pop. I think I grew up um, listening to a lot of rock stuff and playing in bands around Melbourne that were very indie rock or alt rock heavy. And I um, was always the drummer up the back doing backup vocals, but now I've taken to the front and I produce pop music for my bedroom, uh, using a lot of synths, layered vocals, and, of course, live and um, kind of processed drum sounds. So yep. it's pop, but it's definitely a little bit rough around the edges. Yeah, yeah. And your uncle gave you your first drum kick when you were nine, and your love of drums snowballed from there. Even though you are extremely talented, have you faced any barriers being a female drummer? Um, surprisingly, I I haven't. You know, hmm. I I haven't um felt any pressure being a female or um you know being talked too wrong or hmm. anything like that. Um, my experiences have been pretty positive actually I spent you know majority of my career playing in bands with males and um uh it's always been pretty great experiences so far um Mm. I haven't found any trouble with that um which is great and um it's really heartwarming getting messages from you know other female and uh youth the youth in Oz and outside that they've seen me as a, a role model and me playing drums Um, and as a strong, dominant female in the music industry, um, and they're taking, um, following my footsteps and picking up drums as well, which is super, super cool. Mm, Yeah. And your debut single, About You, was an instant hit (coughs) both locally and worldwide after you uploaded it on Triple J in February 2018. You spent most of 2017 holed up in your bedroom writing and recording. How did you originally get into songwriting, and can you remember the first time you wrote a song? Uh, Ever since I started teaching myself piano and guitar, um, I started putting my first songs together, and I started writing songs just from the first chords. I I would always play like like an F chord to a C chord on the keyboard on guitar, And I'd just write basic little songs from there on. And I never felt comfortable showing anyone or playing them in front of anyone. So it was a big secret. And then um, it got to the point where um, I think I was very comfortable in myself and who I was as a person. So um, I would just share my my stories and my music from then on. Yeah, yeah. And it's been fabulous listening to your songs so far. Uh, have you worked with anyone in particular or have you been given any advice that has really helped you? Um, I think the best advice that I've read is actually I found on like Google or Pinterest or something like that. Um, and it said create the things you wish existed. Mm. And that always kind of stuck with me um, from a younger age. Mm. Um And when I thought about creating things you wish existed, I remember growing up, I always wished that there was some kind of pop drumming female artist. Because as a, you know, a young girl growing up, that would have been the coolest thing for me to, like, have someone that I could watch on the TV. Back when I was watching music on TV, there was a lot of, you know, girls in dressing in more provocative clothing and, you know, dancing around. And Mm. I always wish that there could have been some chick on the drums just, you know, tearing it up. Um, So Mm. when I read that quote, create things um, you wish existed, it just made me think a lot of, like, what what do I wish existed? And 
um, I've always, I feel like I take that into, into my career. Mm, yeah. And uh, what is your favourite song or songs to belt, belt out uh, that you will never get sick of? Of my own songs? Uh, any song. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Um, God, there's, you know, a lot of my favourite songs are old kind of classics, like Beast of Burden by the Rolling Stones. My dad was a massive Rolling Stones fan, so he'd, <laughs> he'd thrash that. Um a lot of Amy Winehouse's stuff I yep. feel like it's quite timeless and I never get sick of. Um, Booker T and the MG's Green Onions. Yep. Um, there's no vocal in that song. It's mainly keys parts, which I've always loved. So there's always a few songs. And oh, I really think Leon Bridges', Bridges stuff's really classic and timeless. There's always my favourite artist that I feel like I always end up gravitating towards over and over again. Um, so probably those kind of tunes. Yeah, yeah. And your debut album, About Us, was recently released and you celebrated with a launch party. How do you feel after achieving such a huge accomplishment and did you in wine, sorry, unwind and enjoy the party? Um, yeah, it's, it's a massive thing. I guess your debut album in your music career is a big moment um, and... We celebrated quite large. I had a party that was over 400 people. And um, I definitely do get to celebrate later in the party. I feel like majority of the actual party itself, um, I had a lot of people to talk to. There was 400 people there. So I was kind of getting uh, pushed and pulled left, right and centre. So yep. um, after I made my way around to greet and chat to every single one there, um, I definitely let my hair down. Mm, yeah. And uh, you are currently touring us around Australia and the dates are on your website. What can fans look forward to and what was your first concert? Um, what can fans look forward to? Well, um, my November tour, I'm debuting a new live show. Yep. So there's a lot more exciting things happening. Um, some new arrangements that I've written um, and, and, and a more high energy show and... The first show I ever went to, yep. um, it was actually like a Spice Girls cover band oh, when yeah. I was like when I was like four or five. Um, but after that, it would have been one of my dad's shows. My dad played uh, rhythm guitar in bands and did a bit of backup vocals. And then yep. after that, it would have been someone like probably like Justin Timberlake or something. Mm, yeah, and. Mm. Do you ever get nervous? And if so, how do you settle the nerves? Um, I don't normally get nervous. I've never really got nervous about being on stage. And I think it has to do with, I've always, I've played that many shows sitting on behind the drum kit, like yeah. since I was 12. And then I was a touring drummer and toured to places around the world playing, you know, a lengthy, lengthy amounts of dates and I'd, I got very, very comfortable on stage. I was just surrounded by the drum kit and then, you know, it was just with my project it came to me getting off the drum kit and running around like a front woman. But I don't know, I, it's never really been scary for me being on stage and I think, yeah, I, it's just never really... I've never really been a nervous person about that. I'll be nervous about different things, like going on live telly or something, mm. but being on stage, if I have an instrument in my hand or just a mic, I'm pretty chill. Yeah, yeah. And mm. as was shown with the uh, New Year's concert not long ago, for example. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that was a very, very fun show. Mm, yeah. Uh, name three things you can't live without, and I assume one of them is going to be uh, Crocs, right? Crocs footwear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potentially. Um, yeah, I do I do like wearing those weird shoes called Crocs. They're, they're very comfortable, and if you get them dirty, you can put them under the tap. Um, but three things I definitely say... Look, I was going to say drums, but then... I love piano and keyboard, and then I love guitars and bass. So, 
they're, they're all going to be instruments, I guess. Like yeah. instruments, um, probably love and my love, my, my partner, my girlfriend. And um, my family and friends as well. Mm, yeah. And my last uh, question relates to another very important topic: football. You are an avid. Oh. <laughs> you are very uh, avid Collingwood supporter, uh, as as I've heard. And I'm a. Yeah. But I'm a Richmond supporter, so. <laughs> oh, mate. Here we go. <laughs> so, for Sars, why did you start following the Pies, and how confident are you of them making the grand final? Um, I've been a Pies supporter ever since I was birthed. Um, I, I was brought up in a family full of Pies, extended family as well, cousins, aunties, uncles. Um, and, yeah, we've always been Pies supporters. Yep. We're all MCC members because our dad, as soon as we were born, put us on the list. So, um, which is a, about a fifteen-year wait. So, um, we're all members. So we all, all try to go to every game that we can. And I'm very, very confident about us getting into the grand final. I'm hoping that um, GWS will beat Brisbane. Uh, I mean, Brisbane will beat GWS. Yep. Um, because the last time we played uh, Brizzy, we won by, I think it was around 61 points or something in Brizzy. So I feel very confident um, playing Brizzy. Yep. Uh, last time we played GWS, uh, we lost and we, we had a quite a shocker of a game. So, um, But anyway it goes, I reckon we're in great form. We're looking really good. Um, and I feel like we have a very strong chance of getting into the grand final. And I'm going to try to be there. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, that would that's a once in a lifetime opportunity, obviously. Yeah, hmm. yeah I'm currently messaging everyone I know who's a Collingwood supporter, just trying to steal a ticket. And <laughs> like, I'm happy to go by myself and leave the family behind and just try get myself there and just hang out with random people. I just want to go see that game. Um, it will be my first grand final, so I've never attended one before. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks so much right. for speaking with us today, and good luck with the tour. No worries. Thanks so much, mate. Thank you.